Who is there? I am David. David? Oh, good evening, sir. Good evening, sir. I am David Undubisi. You are Mr. Kelvin uh, Bangbo Bangbo Bangola. Yeah. Oh, oh, I'm sorry for the wrong pronunciation, sir. I'm not a Yoruba man. That's all right. I came in from Port Harcourt yesterday. I have this message for you. It's from Mr. Tony Silas. He said you attended the same university. Oh, bro, Tony. <sighs> Will you see him? We work in the same place at Port Harcourt. Ah, please come in, come in, thank come you, in, sir. Thank come you, thank you, thank you. Wow. Ah. Her line is still unavailable. I don't understand what's happening. She sought permission to join the church choir for administration in town. She didn't say she will keep this long. Why don't you call Kelvin? As the choir director, he should know how we are about. Bro, Tony was our fellowship president while we were on campus. And God really used him to shake the campus. I mean, he was a very serious Christian. He's still a very serious Christian. He coordinates the Christian Workers Fellowship of our company. I'm glad to hear that. You know, it's not easy to remain a standing Christian after so many years. I agree with you. We actually live in a generation in which it's increasingly difficult to be a Christian. A lot of people who claim to be Christians are really not in the faith. The unfortunate thing is that they go on with life as if that is what Christianity is. <laughs> I pray that God will give us the grace to really stand until the end. Amen. Amen. It's not ringing? It is. But no one is picking the call. I've tried twice. Now I'm getting really concerned. I just pray nothing has gone wrong. I'll take my leave. That's all right. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Oh, you have a visto. Um, yes. Meet my wife. Oh, good evening, madam. Yes. Good evening. His brother Daniel. David. Oh, sorry, bro, David. Yeah. Yes, he brought a message from an old schoolmate of mine. You're welcome, sir. It's a pleasure. All right. Goodbye, thank you. sir. Thank you. Goodbye, madam. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, my daughter. God bless you. I just spoke with one of her friends who is also a member of the choir. She said they returned from the choir administration about two hours ago. Uh -huh. What of Josephine? She said Josephine left with Kelvin. For where? She said she doesn't know. Ah, we are set to go. Brother Kelvin. Yes? Why did you introduce me as your wife? <laughs> That's what you are, aren't you? I'm your fiance. We're not yet married. But we will eventually get married. I know. Mm. That means you're my wife. At least by faith. You know, our God is the one who collect the things that be not as though they were. Anyway, I actually called you my wife to save myself from unnecessary embarrassment. What embarrassment? Ah, the person that sent that man was the president of our campus fellowship when I was in the university. And he himself is also a Christian. So for him to see his sister coming out of 
a single brother's room. You know, he can read negative meanings to that. And, um, you know, not all Christians are mature, she, you know. In any case, if you must introduce me as your wife, I prefer you act to be. <laughs> that is wife to be. Sister Josephine, whether wife to be or wife already, all I know is that you're mine forever. Brother Kelvin, <laughs> it's getting late. I need to take my leave right now. My prayers will be getting worried. That's all right. Anyway, thanks for helping with the astros. It's a pleasure. What are friends for? No. Not friends. What are wives for? Rubbish! Nonsense! I'm not going to sit at I am not going to sit at all. Ah! Okay. What nonsense is that? It's I mean, enough. show them in this number. I'll show them. It's, it's enough. No! No! Didn't you hear how she was talking to me? What does she take me for? A fool? She must be out of her mind to be talking to me like that. So because they are close tenants, she doesn't know her class again, Abby. Look, the next time you try that nonsense with me, eh? tell me. What do you stand to gain from trading words with your neighbor? Eh? Hey? I'm sorry, Statue. See, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So because it's your fears, you think the right thing to do is to spend hours in his house. No, no, Dad. I only... By the way, you told us you were going for a choir ministration. How did you end up in Kelvin's house? And what were you doing there for the past two hours? He, he begged me to, to help him to do some cooking and, and to help him wash some of his dirty clothes. To wash and to cook? <sighs> you abandoned all the work at home to your mother and turned yourself to a volunteer worker in the house of a man to whom you are not yet married. You did not even have the courtesy to call to notify us of your movement. To worsen matters, you decided to switch off your phone. No, no, Dad. No. <coughs> My phone actually developed a fault. Besides, I, I didn't intend to stay that long. I'm sorry, Dad. I'm sorry, Mom. That's all right. We are not against your relationship with uh, Kelvin. After all, he proposed to you, you prayed about it, and got a confirmation. Your mom and I also joined you in prayers and consented to it before you went into the relationship. Mm. The point we're making is that you should use the period of your courtship wisely. Sit down. Sister Agnes was in my house this morning. She said I should help her to beg you. Beg me for what? She said you no longer respond to her greetings. I don't need her greetings. Why not? Did she tell you what happened? Of course she did. She said there was a minor misunderstanding between the two of you. But according to her, the issue has since been resolved by the pastor's wife. That's true. But I have made up my mind not to relate with her again. Or am I under any obligation to do so? Please, tell her to leave me alone. I don't need her greetings. No, Sister Tenny. Christians are not supposed to behave this way. Look, look, don't give me that. And I'm a Christian does not make me a fool. Besides, my own kind of Christianity does not take any nonsense from anybody. If you give it to me hot, I give it back to you hot. No, my sister. That's not the teaching of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible admonished us to follow peace with all men. Huh? Courtships, especially Christian courtships, are supposed to serve as a prelude to marriage. Courtship is a period when a man and woman study one another with a view to developing a mutual understanding 
that will eventually lead to marriage. Meetings during this period are best used for spiritual exercises like Bible study, joint evangelism, prayer and fasting. This does not mean that you cannot engage in other activities. You can, but they must be godly ones. By all means, avoid carnality. You see, when you begin to wash his clothes, lay his bread, uh, cook his meals, and engage in other domestic shows <laughs> before marriage, you become unduly intimate. And you begin to have a false sense of being a husband and a wife. This may lead you into the snare of the devil. This is why we do not subscribe to your staying with him for unduly long periods. Anything can happen. My dear, don't trust yourself. Anything can happen. We pray the Lord will uphold you. Good me. Thanks, Dad. Thank you, Mom. All That's right. all right. As Christians, we are supposed to be cool-headed and gentle-natured. We're supposed to be a light to the world around us. We're supposed to make the difference. We are supposed to be agents of change. Look, I know all this, but the truth is, I just can't accept insults. And it's not my fault. It's my nature. It runs in my family. My father, my mother, my brothers and sisters, we all hate insults. Especially my elder sister. <laughs> She doesn't take any rubbish from anybody. You insult her, she insults you and even beats you up. Ah. Well, I guess she's not a Christian. Of course she is. She's even a pastor's wife. Eh? Yes. We don't take insults in my family. It's our nature. I can't do anything about it. You can. And you have to do something very fast. Before this, your so-called nature gets you into trouble, not only with man, but with God. For the choir rehearsal, and instead of you to sit down quietly, the next thing you did was to send a note to me that you would like to see me outside. You even wrote on it that it's very urgent. 
very urgent. We need to talk. What is it? Can't it wait till after the practice? You know, it's not proper for us to stand here talking while other brethren are in there rehearsing. I told you I've been sick for the past four days now. Yes. But when I visited you yesterday, you said you were feeling better. And when I called you this morning also, you said you were much better. I even suggested that you shouldn't bother to come this evening for the rehearsal, so that you can rest at home. The symptoms return this afternoon. Okay. I am sorry about that. I never knew. But Kelvin, we are in trouble. I reject that. How can you say such a thing? We're not in trouble in Jesus' name. Hmm. All right, all right, right. That was good. That was good. Now we're going to sing the text, okay? Yes, sir. But remember, Brock Kevin said, as we sing the third stanza, we should let it rise on the crescendo. That is, as we move from key A flat to A. Is that okay? Yes. Sir. Good. So, keyboardists with keywords now. Let's give it a go, right? Why are you weeping? I'm pregnant. Pregnant? How did you know? Has, how, who told you you are pregnant? The doctor. How did the doctor get to know? How did he know? When the sickness refused to go, in spite of all treatments, I, I suspected something was wrong. That was why I left our family hospital and went to another hospital in town. All the routine tests that I carried out showed that nothing was wrong with me. The doctor then suggested that I do a pregnancy test, but I told it to not be necessary. But when the struggle insisted, I agreed reluctantly. Okay. He later broke the news to me. That you're pregnant? Hey! Sister Joyce, <laughs> why? Why what? Why did you allow this to happen to you? Why did I allow what? Why did you allow yourself to get pregnant? <sighs> what kind of question was that? <sighs> Are you not the person responsible for it? Eh, Brother Kelvin? Yes, I, I know, I know. But uh, you should have been more careful. You're not a small girl. Ah! Brother Kelvin! Lord, I give you my heart, I give you my soul, I live for you alone, every breath that I 
take Every moment I'm away Lord, I love you Okay, Kelvin, it's not right <laughs> What is not right? What is it? Come on, stop being childish Ah, what? Well, well, Kelvin, it's not right for you to just touch me anyhow <laughs> Sister Josephine when did my innocent demonstration of love suddenly become a sin? We've been warned. We've been warned to avoid undue closeness. Who warned us? The church marriage committee. You heard it. My parents even warned me. You know the last time I came to your house and spent hours with you? They, they frowned at it. Oh, your parents told you to break this courtship? No, they never said that, and I didn't say that either. They only warned that undue closeness can lead to anything. Anything? Mm -hmm. Anything like what? I know what you are driving at, huh? Look, that kind of advice is meant for baby Christians. And by God's grace, we are not babies in Christ. We are mature Christians. Hmm? We know what we are doing. All this holding, hugging, and occasional pecs are just my own way of showing you how much I love and cherish you. By God's grace, nothing will happen, okay? Sister Josephine, God sees my heart that what I have for you is pure agape love. God knows I love you. Look into my eyes and tell me you love me too. Mm. I love you too. You deceived me that day. You lured me. You made me do it. You now shift the blame on me. Uh, <laughs> Sister Josephine. I am sorry. I didn't mean to hurt you. It's, it's just that I am confused right now. So what do we do now? I don't... Hey. I don't know. Uh, okay. Who else is aware of this? I mean... Who else has heard about this? No one. Not even your parents. I never told them. Hey! I'm in trouble. What will happen to my reputation? How will people look at me? Ah. Um, we have to do something about this. What? You can't keep this pregnancy. Or, or what do you think? Suggested an abortion. Uh, well, I, I, I just, I think, Brother Kelvin, <gasps> Brother Kelvin, you are shouting. You, are, you don't, you don't understand what I mean. Of course I do. Of course I do, Brother Kelvin. Abortion. Have you forgotten we are Christians? That's the exact point I'm driving at. As Christians, we, we cannot afford to. Agreed. Okay? We're careless. Agreed. We are falling to the sin of fornication. Agreed. We are backsliders. Now are we supposed to? Backsliders? No. Ah. <laughs> That's exactly what we are, Brother Kelvin. That's exactly what we are. 
Are we not supposed to add the seed of mother to our catalog of seeds against okay. God? Okay. okay. Please. Wait. Calm down, please. I understand what you're saying. But considering our position in the church, our reputation and, and name will be destroyed if we keep this pregnancy. Eh? You and I know that pregnancy outside wedlock is on Christians. Besides, a lot of people looking on us as example could backslide if they get to know about this. That's what I am saying. <gasps> Abortion is a risk. What if I lose my life? Sister Josephine, don't talk negatively. God will not allow that to happen. <laughs> Did you just say God? Brother Kelvin, Abortion is a sin against God. It's a sin. Yes, I know. But our God is a merciful God. We can always go back to him and beg for forgiveness. He's just and faithful to forgive us. Please. <laughs> See. Oh. It's that just me. What's it? What happened? Broke I just came out to find out what's keeping you out for so long. What's wrong with her? Um, actually, she just heard the bad news. Oh, Mr. Josephine, what happened? Actually, she's, um, I mean, something very bad happened to one of her family members. Hey, yes. I'm sorry about that. Mr. Yeah. So Josephine, it's okay. Um, Sister Josephine, okay. you know what? You have to just pull yourself together. It's okay. It is well, okay? It is well. This world, this world. <laughs> Josephine, 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 now don't tell me you are okay. Something is wrong with you. This is the third time I'll ask you this same question. You keep saying you are okay, you are okay, but I know you are not. Mom, I'm okay. No, you are not. You've been unusually cold, reserved, and moody for some days now. Josephine. Mom, I said I'm okay. It must be the malaria. I don't think I fully regained my strength since the attack. <sighs> ah, this is not ordinary malaria. It is, Mommy, it is. I think you need to see right. the doctor again. Mom, I'll be all right. Mom, I'm all right. I will not use this thing to scratch. Wait here while I go in there to put things in place. I'll come back for you shortly.
Brother Kelvin. Ah. Good afternoon, sir. Sister Tino. Good afternoon, sir. Ah. Good afternoon. You work here? Uh, yes, sir. Hey, I thought you work at... Uh... Oh, yes. I left the place. Yeah. I moved here last month. Okay, that's fine. You have a patient here? Yes. Uh, no, um, I actually uh, want to see the doctor. I have a little complaint. Oh, I see. Yes. It is well with you, sir. Thank you. Bye, sir. Bless you. We have to look for another place. Why? During an abortion, the fetus, I mean the growing baby inside the uterus, is forcibly removed by different methods. The two most common methods are vacuum suction, which involves the insertion of what we call cannula into the cervix. And through it, the fetus is sucked out with the aid of an electrically powered pump. The other method is what's called D and C, that is dilation and curettage. This involves dilating the cervix and then scraping the uterine lining with the curate to remove the contents. These methods often lead to severe and, at times, life-threatening complications. Some of the most common complications include perforation of the uterus, pelvic inflammatory disease, excessive bleeding, embolism, endotoxic shock, ectopic pregnancy, and cervical incompetence. The latter, cervical incompetence, is one major reason why some women who have aborted in the past find it difficult and at times impossible to get pregnant. And where they manage to get pregnant, the womb is unable to bear the baby to full time. Consequently, they suffer repeated miscarriages. But that's not to say that every woman who is unable to conceive or suffers miscarriages must have aborted in the past. No, there are many other factors. Psychologically, Research has shown that women who commit abortion often suffer what we call abortion trauma syndrome, ATS. Sister Tuesday. You, you may receive your call. No, doctor. Um, I'll get back to the call later. Okay, thank you. The symptoms of abortion trauma syndrome include guilt, Anxiety, depression, low self-esteem, sleeping and eating disorder, and suicidal thoughts. Aside this risk, abortion is also morally wrong. I mean, it's morally wrong to want to terminate the life of a human, even if it is that of a baby in the womb. Hmm. The spiritual consequences of abortion are the most grievous. You lose your peace, you lose favor with God, and ultimately you miss eternity in heaven. 
By the way, I, I guess the two of you are not born again. Otherwise, you will not have engaged in premarital sex in the first place, let alone contemplating an abortion. My dear young friends, two wrongs don't make a right. I advise that you keep the pregnancy. Mm -hmm. More importantly, come to Jesus. Beg for forgiveness. Give your life to him and let him turn your ashes to beauty. Are you ready to do that? keep this any longer. We won't keep it. And that's why we have been running up and down to see if we can get someone who will help us get rid of it. <laughs> Look, don't mind that doctor. He only wanted to frighten and discourage us. No matter the obstacle, I'm sure we will eventually get someone who will help us get rid of it. Please, stop crying. I can't keep this secret anymore. I will open up. Sister Josephine. <laughs> I will open up to my parents. I will even tell the pastor. No, you can't. Sister Josephine, you can't do that. <laughs> I can. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. Brother Kelvin, it's better for us to open up this secret and face the shame. It's better to open up to people who can help us. I can't afford to lose my life and then miss eternity with God. I can't. <laughs> Sister Josephine. Sister Josephine. <laughs> Sister Josephine. The spiritual consequences of abortion are the most grievous. You lose your peace, you lose favor with God, and ultimately you miss eternity in heaven. Accident. That's all right. You're weeping. Why? Is it because of the broken glass? No, Mom. I have a serious problem. A problem? What is it? What is it, my dear? Tell me about it. Excuse me, Mom. Hello? Hello, Sister Josie. Where are you? Home. What is it? Are you alone? What do you have to say? Um. I just called to beg you. Please don't reveal the secret to anyone. Exposing it will not do either of us any good. I, I have a good news. I eventually found a doctor who specializes in carrying out abortions. He said he has been doing it for the past 17 years. And 
He assured us that there will be no complications whatsoever. He gave us an appointment for tomorrow morning. Will the arrangement be okay by you? Hello? Hello? I'm listening. You heard all I said? Yes. Will the arrangement be okay by you? I don't know. Good night. Hello? Who was that? One of my friends. You sounded rude to the caller. In any case, you said you had a serious problem. Open up to me. You know you can always trust me. Josephine, I'm sorry. It is well. I flushed it out. She's as clean as a virgin now. Don't worry about the slight discomfort. It will soon subside with the next few hours. This will help. Two tablets, three times daily. Sir, are you sure she will be fine? Are you doubting my ability? I told you, I've been doing this for the past 17 years. I have successfully terminated all manner of pregnancies. <laughs> the one before your own was a three month old pregnancy. But what I flushed out of the lady was a set of triplets. The lady involved. Is still alive today? Young man, relax. Your girlfriend will be perfectly okay. Hmm? When she told me she had a problem, I was seriously scared. After pressing her to find out what the problem was, she eventually spoke out. She said she was having a tough time with one of her senior colleagues in the office. She said the fellow wanted her to partake in some underhand practices to defraud the company, but she refused. She told him that as a serious Christian, she can never be a party to that. As a result, the man has been victimizing her and making life tough for her in the office. Is that all? Mm-hmm. I was relieved when I heard that. I thought it was something more serious. Oh. 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 oh, Jesus. Auntie Josephine, is something the matter? Why? You've kept to yourself all day. It's unusual. I'm okay. I just need some time to meditate. Well, Dad and Mom asked me to invite you. What for? 
I don't know. Where are they? In the sitting room. Who were they discussing about? Were they talking about me? I don't know. All right. I'll be with them in the moment. You can't go. I have never attended an exclusive Sunday school preparatory class like the one we just had. Opinions were just flying left, right and center. My brother, it was hot. I am sure the real Sunday school class this coming Sunday is going to be a great eye opener. Yeah, I agree with you. Yeah. You see, this issue of uh, eternal security is a highly controversial one. Hmm. I just thank the Holy Spirit for giving us a scriptural conclusion. Hmm. Well, I thank God for you too. Because it was your submission that finally gave a clear insight into the topic. Otherwise, we would have left the place more confused. Yeah. <laughs> we thank God. Come to think of it, bro, Taddy. How can one argue that no matter what happens along the way, once you accept Christ into your life, heaven is guaranteed. That suggests that even if a believer begins to live in sin, everyone is still sure. Abba. Rochebo, as I said in the class, the doctrine of eternal security, which says once saved, forever saved, is actually a doctrine from the pit of hell. Mm -hmm. It is often propagated by preachers who don't value certification and consecration themselves. Mm -hmm. These ones garnish heretic teachings with scriptures that are either misquoted or misinterpreted. Mm. They encourage compromise in Christian living mm. and end up giving their hearers false hopes of heaven. Mm. I just pray God will keep us from falling prey to these satanic teachers. Amen. Amen. of daddy and mommy, are they back? Mommy just called. She said she's on her way back. I, I told the doctor that the pain has refused to subside. So he said I should give you these drugs, that they are stronger pain relievers than the previous ones. Let me get you water so that you can take them. to do it. You pushed me. Sister Josephine, I am very sorry. I'm sorry. I don't mean to hurt you in any way. Uh, Josephine, what is it again? Welcome, man. Thank you, Kelvin. 
She was okay when we left home about an hour ago. What is it again, my dear? Um, I, I came in just to meet her like this. What kind of sickness is this? My God, please deliver me from this predicament. You know, the whole problem started as malaria. We were very happy when her condition began to improve a few days ago. Only for this abdominal problem to start. Kelvin, thanks for your care. We thank God, Ma. You've impressed us. Not many men will stand by their fiancé the way you have stood by Josephine. For all that you've done for her, I pray my God will reward you appropriately and accordingly in Jesus' name. Um, it is well, Ma. His majesty has sent each of us to the world to fulfill a divine purpose. It is therefore our duty to discover and fulfill this purpose. I therefore beseech you, brethren, let's do our very best for the kingdom of God while we still can. I pray for each of us that none of us will disappoint the Lord who sent us to this world in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let's remember that when a woman goes to the market to shop, she returns home afterwards. And no matter how long a farmer stays on the farm, he must come back home at the end of the day. I received the bad news just before we started this meeting. Brethren, our beloved sister Josephine was called home this afternoon. Go! You are welcome. Thank you, my dear. How did this go? It was okay. The atmosphere was tense throughout the burial ceremony. Hmm. Everyone was in tears. I couldn't help shedding tears myself. Especially when she was lowered into the grave. It was at that point that it dawned on me fully that Sister Josephine was gone. That was why I refused to attend the barrier. I know I will cry my eyes out. It is not easy to lose a loved one. Huh? Ah, Sister Josephine. That's life for you, my dear. Here today, gone tomorrow. Ah. Bro, Tadi, Sister Toyasi. I'm sorry I kept you waiting. I was actually answering your phone call. Yes, sir. Uh, your younger brother explained to us. Thank you for standing by me at this my period of grief. I pray that God will give us the grace to fulfill our days. Please sit down. Thank you, sir. Uh, <coughs> sir, we are here for two things. First, we thank God for the way he took control of the funeral program of our beloved sister Josephine. The pastor's message at the Christian week yesterday was challenging. Then, your short 
tributes and words of exhaltation were heart touching. Well, we thank God for bringing something good out of a bad occurrence. I still can't believe Sister Josephine has gone like that. Well, God knows best. <laughs> <laughs> Sister Toyosi, please don't do this. When you weep like this, you make it difficult for me to get over the bad experience. Bro, Tadi, please let me pacify her, please. <laughs> Sister Toyosi is not weeping because of Sister Josephine's death. She's weeping for us. Us? Yeah. <laughs> She's weeping because of herself and for me. And how do you mean? Your short exhortation uh, by the graveside yesterday broke her heart. Especially when you rounded up with the book of Numbers chapter 32 verse 23, which says, your sin will find you out. Her conscience was pricked. Her heart have not been at peace since then. Sir, we are here to make a confession. Yeah, and um, what is it? Uh, you know, Sister Toyosi and I, are in a relationship as in a courtship. Yes. Your wedding comes up in five months' time. <laughs> we have been committing the sin of fornication. Fornication? Ah! Since when? It started about ten months ago. Why? Ah! Why? What that day? Sister Tony, you see? Ah. Ah. Hmm. The saddest part of the story is that Sister Tony, you see, got pregnant sometime last year and we aborted the pregnancy. Ah! Bro, Tade, this is serious. How did you get yourself into all this? You're supposed to be a, a, a Christian brother, a serious Christian brother. Eh? You've been a Sunday school teacher, and you, a lead vocalist in the choir. You're the ones people should look up to as examples of correct Christian living. Eh? Oh. The problem now is Sister Toyosi is carrying another pregnancy. Ah! She's two months pregnant. This is disgusting. Ha! Our intention was to go and abort the pregnancy on Monday. But your exhortation at the graveside yesterday sent fears into our heart. We don't know what to do. Of course you do. You know what to do. You keep the pregnancy. And you dare not abort it. Abortion is a serious sin against God and a great crime against humanity. Come to think of it, I, I still don't understand why people, I mean, how unbelievers can summon the courage to kill innocent babies just like that. Not to talk of uh, so-called believers who should know better. Oh. Brother Tade, Sister Toyosi, I must tell you the bitter truth. You both are a big disappointment. Huh. You are sinners. And you should go back to God and beg him for forgiveness. After which you will go for serious deliverance prayers. Because you have opened the doors of your life for demons to come in and, and, and torment you.
Kelvin. Kelvin. You are a fornicator. You are a, you are a, you are a murderer. You are a, murderer. You are a liar. You are, a liar. You are an hypocrite. You are hypocrite. Kelvin. Kelvin. You are a fornicator. You are a, fornicator. You are a murderer. You are a, murderer. You are a liar. You are, a liar. You are an hypocrite. You are hypocrite. Kelvin. Kelvin. You are a fornicator. You are a murderer. You are a, murderer. You are a, murderer. You are a liar. You are, a liar. You are an hypocrite. You are hypocrite. Kelvin. No. No. Ah. You this strange voice. You have started again. You foul spirit. I reject, I bind and I cast you out in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Kelvin, I cannot be cast out. I am not a spirit. Then who are you? I am your conscience. God assigned me to you, like every other human being, to give you a sense of what is right and what is wrong to govern your thoughts and your actions, to urge you to do right rather than wrong. Are you claiming to be the Holy Spirit? <laughs> no, I am not. I am just a messenger in the hand of the Holy Spirit, especially in the life of every child of God. Then why are you tormenting me? Why? <laughs> I am not tormenting you. You are the one tormenting yourself. I am only doing my job. I don't want you to perish. I want you not to engage in the sin of fornication. But you wouldn't heed my warning. I urge you not to lure Josephine into committing an abortion. But you disregarded my voice. The abortion eventually led to a premature death. I have since been prompting you to open up, to confess your iniquity and beg for forgiveness. Instead of doing this, you have been playing a game of hide and seek with your maker. What are you talking about? I have confessed to God and he has forgiven me. So what else? No, no, Kelvin, you have not been forgiven. What you did was partial confession. Moreover, you have told several lies to cover up your evil deeds. Open up to the parents of the dead girl. Let them know you had a hand in the premature death of their daughter. But instead of doing this, you have been living a false life. Quite shamelessly, you were even bold enough to stand up in the midst of brethren and give a tribute and an exaltation at a funeral. Kelvin, you are a liar. You are an hypocrite. You are a deceiver. No. I won't take that from you. It is written in the Bible that there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. Since Christ has not condemned me, nobody can condemn me. Kelvin, stop deceiving yourself. You only quoted a part of Romans chapter 8 verse 1. The complete verse says, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. You don't walk after the Spirit. You walk after the flesh. And you know it. You are therefore condemned. If the Son shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. So says the word of God. Since Jesus has set me free, <laughs> I cannot be bound by anybody. My conscience is clear. No. No. That is another self-deception. 
I your conscience? I'm not clear. Kelvin, I admonish you. Confess your misdeeds so that you can be free from all these torments and eternal damnation. No! No, enough! Enough of this! Get out! Get out of here! Get out of here! Leave! What is happening to me? Why is my conscience constantly being pricked? I've prayed over this issue, yet my mind is not at rest. How do I deliver myself from this voice that is tormenting me all the time? How do I settle this matter once and for all? I know what to do. Yes, brother Kevin. Sir, my mind has not been at rest since the death of Sister Josephine. And I live every day in constant fear and depression. No, you should have gotten over this. What are you afraid of? I really don't know. I have tried everything possible to get over it without success. Oh no, my brother. Don't allow the devil to cheat you. The Lord has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love, and that of a sound mind. I believe the Holy Spirit is going to help you. You have nothing to worry about, except, of course, you have something you want me to know. Nothing, sir. Um, sir, I have decided to go for a seven-day personal retreat with marathon prayer and fasting. Okay. I'll be traveling to Getman Prayer Mountain at Okebudo Village for the retreat, sir. Okebudo? Yes, sir. Uh, why did you choose to go that, that far? Um, I want to get far from every possible distraction so as to be in absolute seclusion. I really want to concentrate and sort some things with God. But okay, Buddha is rather... Besides, I, I believe God is leading me to that prayer mountain, sir. Okay, if that is it, I pray you are going to have a fruitful uh, retreat. Yes, sir. When are you leaving? Tomorrow morning, sir. Tomorrow morning? Yes, sir. Let me pray with you then. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Brethren, like we all know, our choir director is currently out of town on a personal retreat. We thank God for giving him the grace to remain steadfast, even after the sudden departure of his fiancée, Sister Josephine, who was also a vibrant member of this church choir. Beloved, as members of the executive of this choir, it is our spiritual responsibility to lift up the hands of our leaders in prayer. Amen. Amen. So we're going to pray for Brock Kelvin that God should give him more grace, more unction, and more revelation. Shall we pray in the name of Jesus? Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we ask that you give our leader, Brock Kelvin, more grace, more unction. Why are you laughing? I brought you the word of God. And after preaching for some minutes, I asked you if you were ready to give your life to Christ. The next thing you did was to burst into laughter. What's funny? You... <coughs> you are funny. Very funny. It's so funny that somebody like you can carry a Bible and be preaching around. <laughs> How do you mean? I'm a child of God. I'm born again. And it's my duty as a Christian to do so. A Christian? <laughs> you 
can't be a Christian. Everybody knows you in this neighborhood. Are you not the troublesome lady who lives on the next street? We know you. You've quarreled with virtually everybody around here. I guess you've forgotten. You insulted me on a taxi cab about two months ago. You now carry a Bible and roam around in the name of evangelism. Look, evangelism does not fit your mouth. You need to be born again yourself. You better go and sit down somewhere and stop deceiving yourself. <laughs> In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Brand the Bible says. Iron sharpening iron. Oh, yes. Amen. Amen. He says, so a man sharpening the countenance of his friend. Yes. Amen. 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 Brother Kevin's Christian life is worthy of emulation. Yes. I mean, his purity, his high moral standards, his deep commitment to the work of God, they are worthy of emulation. Now to the final prayer point. We are going to use Bro Kevin's Christian life as a point of contact to pray for ourselves. Mm -hmm. Let's pray that the same God who has been helping Bro Kevin to be serious spiritually should also help us to be like him. Begin to talk to God this afternoon. God help me. God help me. God help me. As you help Bro Kevin, oh Lord. As you help Bro Kevin, oh Lord. Oh Lord help me. Lord help me. To be serious like Brother Kevin. In the name of Jesus. Hmm. Listen to undiscerning Christians. Praying unintelligent prayers. Listen to them asking God to pattern their lives after that of an hypocrite. Hmm. hmm. What ignorance. Why the scriptures admonish them to look unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of their faith. They chose to make a fellow human being their standard. Forgetting that no matter how anointed a man of God he is, he remains a man. And as such, it is unwise to make another man a standard for Christian living. Hmm. My faith looks up to thee, thou lamp of Calvary. Savior divine, now hear me while I pray. Take all my sins away, Lord, and let me from this day be holy. Lord Jesus, your word says, Come and let us reason together. What says, even if our sin is as red as scarlet, Lord, you can still make us as white as snow. Lord Jesus, wash me with this up and make me clean again. Make my life all again. You again? You followed me here. Why would you leave me alone? Leave me alone for God's sake. I can't leave you alone because I don't want you to perish. You traveled several kilometers away from the city to this mountain in the village to pray for forgiveness. When the forgiveness you so much desire is back there in the city. Kelvin. Stop beating about the bush. Stop chasing shadows. Stop deceiving yourself. Don't waste time praying prayers that God is not hearing. If you really want to be free from condemnation, 
If you want to escape the hot judgment hanging over your head, go back to the parents of the dead lady. Confess to them that you pushed their daughter to premature death and beg for their forgiveness. Kelvin, to obey is better than sacrifice. Go back to the parents of the dead lady. Confess, Confess to, them to them that you pushed, you pushed their, daughter their daughter to premature, to premature death, death and beg for their forgiveness. Oh. My name and my reputation. Oh. This is not easy, Lord. Lord, have mercy on me. Have mercy on me, Lord. I'm missing a miller. Lord, I'm missing a miller. Dear, I've been calling your line for the past 20 minutes. The calls were not going through. I'm sorry, dear. The phone just. Uh... Dear, it has happened. What? Kelvin was involved in an accident. What? He was here some days ago to tell us that he was going to Kebudo for a seven-day uh, personal retreat on the mountain. The accident occurred on his way back from the mountain yesterday. I hope it wasn't too bad. <sighs> it was bad. Kelvin died in the accident. My God! <gasps> this is a tragedy. Jocelyn died two weeks ago. Now the man to whom she was engaged to be married just died in an accident. I can't understand this mystery. The final tributes are this special commendation service in honor of our late brother will be delivered by the assistant director of Great Grace Choir, Brother Femi Labinjo. Amen. I won't be doing this alone this afternoon. I want to invite the choir secretary, Sister Beatrice, to join me. Brother Kelvin Omoya Jowo Bangbola was the choir director of Great Grace Christian Assembly until he was called to glory. He joined the choir 14 years ago. His membership was a big boost as he used his God-given talent in singing, songwriting, and as a multi-instrumentalist to minister to the body of Christ. He eventually assumed the post of the choir director five years ago. It is worthy of mention that the vision of the church choir exploded under the dynamic leadership of Brother Kelvin. He initiated, facilitated, and single-handedly financed the production of the first ever music album by the choir. Under his leadership, the church choir became an interdenominational brand with open doors to minister in other churches and programs within and outside the state. It got to a point that our general overseer once declared openly that God used the church choir 
to announce the church assembly to the world. Brother Kevin was a humble, quiet, cool-headed and gentle-natured Christian. His high spiritual standard and unquenchable love for God rubbed off on other members of the choir. He made fervent prayers and regular fasting part and parcel of the choir operations. His hatred for sin and unrighteousness was very evident to all. He never condoned indiscipline. He led strictly by example. <sighs> The sudden departure of our beloved brother came as a rude shock to all members of Great Grace Choir. A rare gem is gone. A visionary leader has dropped the button. A shining star is falling from the sky. Brother Kelvin, the legacy you left behind the legacy of Christianity with dignity. A legacy of ministry with integrity. A legacy of service with righteousness. We trust God to help us to build on this. Brother Kelvin. Brother Kelvin. The eternity you spoke so fervently about has finally come. The paradise you sang so passionately about is finally yours. The heavenly home you cherish so much is finally your eternal home. We, re we rejoice in the assurance that you have gone back home. Continue to rest in the bosom of our Lord Jesus Christ till we meet again on the resurrection morning. <laughs> Goodbye, <laughs> Good night. <laughs> the next item on the program is an exhortation to be given by our Father in the Lord, Pastor Alex Nweke. But this will be preceded by a special music rendition by Great Grace Choir. As we listen, I encourage us to remember 1 Thessalonians 4.13, which charges us not to sorrow even as others which have no hope. Though painful, we should rejoice in the knowledge that Brother Kevin did not die. He has only passed on into glory. He is currently singing songs of future with angels of God in heaven. If we hold on to our faith in Christ, we shall see him again. Brother Kevin Bangbola is not lost. He has only gone back home. God bless you as you listen to this song ministration.
Opportunity to speak at the commendation service kept declaring that Kelvin had come back home. Which home? Which heaven have they been talking about? Is it the same heaven where I, Paul, and other apostles and saints of God are? Is it the same heaven where the most righteous God lives in His holy majesty? Of course not. This is the deception that goes on after the death of many so-called believers. Kevin Omoya Bangola actually started the race to heaven when he became born again. But he drifted off the track and missed it just before his death. He has not come back home. He is not in heaven. He is presently waiting sorrowfully in the place of eternal damnation. Oh, the departed soul is languishing in hell. Behold, his family, friends, and well wishers are out there lavishing him with praise. What an irony. But holy angel, why do people engage in celebrations of lies and deceit at fooling us like this? It is not at every funeral like this that lies like this are told. 
behold, many faithful children of God have died and have actually come to heaven. As such, the tributes people deliver at their funerals and good things people say about them are absolutely true. Unfortunately, many fake believers and even well known unbelievers have died and marched straight to hell. Yet, people gather like this to sing their praises. The tributes, testimonies, and encomiums people deliver at their funerals are nothing but lies. Behold, what matters ultimately is not what men say about a departed soul, but what God says. On the last day, every man will have one out of two possible declarations from the mouth of God Almighty. It will either be, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. Or, Depart her from me, ye cursed into everlasting fire. Sadly, Kevin or Moya Yehu Bangola did not make it home. He got lost. Unfortunately, the people he left behind not know this. Kelvin, stop beating about the bush. Stop deceiving yourself. If, if you, you really, really want, want to be free, free from, from condemnation, if you, if you want, want to escape the earth's judgment hanging over, over your head, go back to the parents of the dead lady. Confess to them that you pushed their daughter to premature death and beg for their forgiveness. Kelvin, to obey is better than sacrifice. 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 <laughs> we did our best to bring Josephine up in the Christian way. But she chose to neglect our teachings and counsel. <laughs> now the worst that could happen has happened to her. Because Calvin capitalized on her carelessness and gullibility. <laughs> Daddy. I know I have sinned against you at money. And I have sinned against God as well. <laughs> I have no justification. All I'm asking for is mercy. Forgive me, sir. Forgive me, sir. <laughs> We are seriously pained and deeply hurt. But as Christians, we have no other choice than to forgive you. The 
if we refuse to forgive you, we'll jeopardize our own heaven too. <laughs> Mommy and I forgive you from the depth of our heart. We only admonish you to see forgiveness from the one that matters most. And that is God. Without this, you stand the risk of ending up in hell. Ha <laughs> 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 